Hello everybody, Ace Stocky here and welcome to episode 2 of my witchery tutorial series. Uh, in the last episode we talked about the witch's oven, the cauldron, making mutandus, um, getting set up and eventually culminating and getting yourself an altar. Uh, this episode we are going to talk about poppets uh, and then we're briefly going to talk about how to get yourself set up uh, for distilling and the distillery. Um, in the middle there, we're going to talk about what to do with all that gold ore you've got, so you can start making things out of gold. Um, so to start with, we're going to talk about poppets. So now that you've got that Spanish moss, which is growing beautifully on your cobblestone wall by now, and you're harvesting regularly, by now you have quite a bit of that. Um, you've also got a whole lot of wool, some string. Um, yeah, we'll grab some flowers, some feathers, some clay, some dirt, some water artichokes some ink sacks, some mushrooms, <clears throat> you know, just general kind of naff that you find all around the place. And what we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves our first poppet. So I have bone needle up there, but what I'll show you first is how to make the poppet. Just show you the recipe for it. So the recipe is string, Spanish moss, wool, and this thing called a bone needle. Well, what's that? Well, you're going to need to collect a bunch of bones for this mod. Um, bones actually have a couple of uses in this mod. The first is that if you've got wood ash, you can actually, instead of turning one single bone into three bone meal, you can turn one bone and seven wood ash, which is basically basically just saplings, and get seven bone meal. So you've doubled in a bit your bone meal. The next thing is, there's quite a lot of reasons and times where you will need to put a piece of flint with a piece of bone, and that'll get you bone needles. Um, you can also put your piece of flint back with the bone needle again, and actually carve the flint um, but we're going to talk about waystones and things much later on. Uh, for now, we want to make that poppet. So I'm actually going to make a couple of poppets. Let's go four poppets. So four pieces of string. Then yeah, there's really only they don't stack. There's really only two poppets that I'm going to recommend to you to start with. Um, there's two others uh, that certainly you can do. Um, they're just a bit harder to get. For those of you who are, I guess, creative types and like to build things, um, I also thought I'd just quickly show, these are all the vanilla logs. So you've got oak, spruce, birch, jungle, acacia, and dark oak. And those are the planks that go with them. And this is what the logs and planks that come with witchery look like as well. I really do, I really do like the look of that hawthorn plank, that nice, really quite pale white colour. It's even a bit whiter than birch. Um, and it'd be an amazing contrast to the dark oak. Um, I also think this kind of yellowish is a good contrast to some of the sort of browns and, and pale yellows of the birch. I can't think of the older, the jungle and the acacia though. They're just just not colours that I'm comfortable you know, in thinking out loud about how to work with. But I reckon you probably could do something. So now that you have these poppets, you have to turn them into a kind of poppet. And you can see that it says not bound there as well. That's why I have all these glass bottles. What you're actually going to want to do is put a glass bottle with the bone needle and it makes a thing called a tag lock kit. Now I'm going to do four of those as well to go with the four poppets because basically every poppet needs to have someone that it's bound to. And so by taking the tag lock kit, uh, hmm. see this is probably not going to work. I, I was hoping you could just right click it. Um, what you can do is you can normally use it as an item on somebody else um, and it will uh, grab, call it their DNA for lack of a better word. Um, to get it from yourself though, you actually have to have a bed. Clearly by now you're playing Minecraft, uh, you'll have a bed. So then what you do is you take the tag lock kit and you right click on the bed and as you can see here, tag lock kit bound to a stocky. Now if you put the poppet and the tag lock kit together, you currently get nothing, and that's because um, these are not actually useful poppets. What you need to do is create it into one of the other ones. So the earth protection poppet is probably the first um, and most easy one to get. Uh, it requires clay, dirt, and feathers. So poppet, we have our piece of clay, piece of dirt, and two feathers, and that creates an earth protection poppet. And then you take the poppet and the tag log kit, and it is now bound to me. Now the way that this particular poppet works is it takes falling damage 
uh, on behalf of the person who took the damage basically it just takes all the damage for you so being that I'm on creative I can fly up quite high in the air turn creative off and I fall and you can see I took a bunch of damage you're like well what's the point of having an earth protection pop it um, if it doesn't do anything well see that's the beauty of this device if we go up really high and then fall so that it would kill me you can see the poppet actually disappeared and in place of that I lost no health so basically the way the earth protection poppet works is if you ever make a fall that would kill you uh, it sacrifices itself to save your life um, I know there's a bunch of times where I've been you know running around and done silly things and fallen into ravines um, or in a very recent let's play I fell into a quarry hole out of Buildcraft and died. Um, so you know there's a number of times where that particular poppet uh, could actually come in handy. It's also really easy to make. Um, everything that goes into it is a renewable resource. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the renewability of clay soon, um, but it is uh, it is a mostly renewable resource, um, and everything else, dirt, not exactly renewable but abundant. Okay, that's a better way of putting it. Everything that goes into it is an abundant resource. Um, so the next kind requires uh, two ink sacs and two water artichokes. Locations may vary. Now this is a water poppet. And what this one does is, if I can find a deep pool of water over here, it protects you from drowning. Now I'm not sure... Now I read that this takes damage on your behalf. So I don't know if that means it completely refills your your bubbles and sacrifices itself or if it just starts to take the damage that you would take as hearts. Hopefully it's the second. So there you go. It completely sacrificed itself um, to give you a full lung of air and uh, what's that? Five hearts of health? So about half half filled me up. So I think that's probably um, if if you find yourself in situations where you know you're going to be doing things around the bottom, maybe digging up a whole lot of clay or something like that. And again, clay is a resource that you use a lot of in this mod. Um, that's not too expensive. Ink sacks are easy to get your hands on. Um, water artichokes. You know, you've got your little farm going. Water artichokes are are pretty good as well and certainly whatever you do, don't eat water artichokes um, made the mistake of eating one once and it gives you hunger too which is like zombie rotten flesh uh, but on steroids so the the next poppet that you might make well that you can make anyway um, when you're starting anyway is the the voodoo protection poppet um, now I have all the gear that I need to make this I'm not actually going to show you making it um, and the reason for that is without this being on a server it doesn't actually do me any good it doesn't protect me from anything um, but if somebody else was to make this which is a voodoo poppet um, and that's again it's a fairly easy thing to make um, that will actually protect you from that particular I guess that fate of you know them sticking needles into it now the way that the voodoo poppets actually work um, and I do have the right amount of stuff for it I'm, I'm thinking I'm actually going to try that out and just see if I can make a voodoo pop and demonstrate how it works. Um, I wasn't convinced that it was going to work, but now I think that it will. So we need a fermented spider's eye and a belladonna flower. And exhale the horned one. Okay, that should be... I mean, these are not incredibly difficult things to get a hold of, um, which can make them fairly early game to get your hands on. So I can tag lock it to myself, and now it's a voodoo pop it against me. So now we make ourselves a bunch of bone needles, and you put it side by side. And the way this works is if you hold down right click, you can see it gave me a bit of a knock. Whichever direction you're facing, it transfers that movement uh, to the person who has it. So, so if you know that someone's you know in the Nether and they're doing something really you know 
sneaky around lava and things like that, you can just every now and then go, you know, it might be right click and shake. Yeah, so you can see it, it moved me quite a big distance then. Although, I'm not completely sure if that's how you're supposed to do it, but I think that's how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to just like hold down right mouse button. Yeah, so you can see it kind of throws them around a bit. It's meant to be like they're being blown by some wind. Um, now, the other thing that you can do, maybe it works better if I'm out of creative mode. No. And the other thing that you can do is, if I shift right click, each time you can see it sticks a bone needle in me. And it doesn't do a lot, um, but if you're mining a block or doing something like that, and then you hold down shift and right click and stick the bone needle in, uh, it can stop them doing what they're doing. It, if they're not if they're not full of health, so let's go for, let's eat one of those water artichokes and demonstrate what I was talking about. Um, full. Got to make myself a little bit hungry so that I can eat this. Um, while I'm getting myself to be a little bit hungry, I might talk about the next one um, that you're probably going to be able to make, uh, which is the hunger protection poppet which is this one just here. So it takes two rotten flesh and two glistering melons. Um, now it's not particularly useful on normal mode or easy. It only really works on hard mode. Basically if you ever die of starvation um, it refills in the same way that the water protection popper does. Um, it's a... Well, I don't know if it's the world's most useful thing um, but I, I can imagine it'll find a place on some of the, you know, the, the sort of hardcore servers and things like that, where you know food is a pretty precious resource and it's a bit hard to get. You know, some of those are quite difficult to kind of manage on. So the the next one that I think is the one that I would actually create uh, is the lava protection poppet. Fire protection, fire protection. Unfortunately, it's crafted with these things called wool of bat. So ember moss, I've already shown you how to get. Wool of bat, actually, I'm going to show you how to get in the next video, uh, but just know that that is a really useful poppet um, that protects you from fire damage and lava damage and things like that. And it basically saves you from fire by setting itself on fire. Um, so I can't actually, well, you, know, you wouldn't be able to craft it at this point, um, but I can give you a quick sort of demo on how it would work anyway. So I have it. I'm going to bind it to myself with a tag lock kit as we did before. It's now a protection poppet for me. When I walk through there, I take fire damage. If I stand in it, I keep taking fire damage. And what will eventually happen is this poppet will save me. Works much better with lava. Um, But even still, it's kind of useful. It takes a little bit longer when obviously you're not using lava that kills you really quickly. So there we go. So once again, uh, healed me halfway back up. And at the cost of the poppet actually dying and, and disappearing. So they, they're pretty useful things, these poppets. Um, I don't tend to use them a whole lot in single player worlds. Um, mainly because I tend to be a bit more careful than throwing myself off things and setting myself on fire. Um, but now that I know exactly how that fire protection one works, I see I thought it took damage every time you got damaged. Um, but now that I've looked into it a bit and found out that they all only kick in just at the point where you would die, um, I think that's a really awesome thing. So the next thing that we're going to make, you can see here I've got three furnaces, 12 iron, and a bucket. Uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bunch of buckets, four of in fact. No, take that back. You only need one bucket because you get your buckets back each time. So let's say we had 12 iron again. Because that was the correct amount that we actually needed. Um, and the way this recipe works for a new item called a silver vat, uh, is you place your bucket on top, a furnace underneath, and then you do just that. And that gives you a silver vat. So it's a bit of a pain crafting it this way, but obviously it saves you having to have lots of buckets. So again, you know, to get to this point, you're not looking at 
astronomical amounts of iron before you can start processing your gold. Um, now you can do it with just one attached to the side of your furnace because each one has a chance of getting a, a silver deposit out of the gold that you smelt. Um, I like to go straight to three because I find three to be better. But basically what you do is you place your gold ore in there and you cook um, and it gives you the potential to have deposits of silver in each one of those vats for each piece of gold that you cook. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get on to, as I said, the distillery which is made like so. It's made with two clay jars, four pieces of iron, two gold ingots and an attuned stone. The only thing that's really difficult about that whole process uh, is the attuned stone because it needs the whiff of magic. Now we made a bunch of those before um, so you're going to have plenty of them. There we can see my little silver deposits. You just right click to get them out and then you'll have your gold which we need two of. So the other thing that I need to do is I need to trade this bucket because in order to make it you need a bucket with lava in it. By the time you've got diamonds uh, I don't anticipate that getting getting lava is going to be very difficult for you at all. So to make your attune stone it's a bucket of lava, a diamond and a whiff of magic in the correct order and that gives you the attune stone. Now you're going to need quite a few of these um, and so this is something that I would actually suggest that you make pre-nether. So that's kind of why I'm showing it now before I show some of the nether goodies and that gives you a distillery. Now this uses the power of the altar so it needs to be within that 14 blocks of it but anywhere will do. And you can see the little symbol appeared and then disappeared that means it's got power and now you can use this uh, to process things into other things. Uh, this is actually pretty neat because later on um, you'll need to process certain things in order to get um, the chalk that you need for rituals. Um, so I'll, sh I'll show you through the, the first, I guess, quick process of that right now. Um, you need to process, I believe it is a foul fume, which I know I have a bunch of. I'm sure it's a foul fume and then we take that wood ash that we had and I demonstrated last episode how to turn it into quicklime so it should be one foul fume and one quicklime so we chuck that in there chuck that in there and now it will start processing and this is basically what the distillery does now if you have the diamonds to spare you know you can build lots of these um, if you look at this altar right now, you can see that the power kind of goes down and goes back up. Because um, one, pretty much this one times is the recharge rate. One distillery uses this a little bit faster than it can recharge. And then this will give you the outputs that I'll show you in a second. Um, so that's basically the processing path that you need to go down. So you can see that out of those eight, using these three, I got six. Um, so that's, that's not really too bad. Now what are these used for? Uh, these are used for later game things uh, when you start hunting werewolves. So you can make a silver sword, you can make silvered witch hunter armor, and these are all things that are really useful for fighting against werewolves. Werewolf trap, silver bolts. So again, all, all new things that have been added to witchery quite recently, uh, but I think really, really cool things. Uh, so here we are. We have a slime ball, an oil of vitriol, and a gypsum. Now this is used to make uh, the ritual chalk that I will show you when I get to um, rituals, circle rituals and things uh, in a little bit of time. Uh, the oil of vitriol is used to process uh, other items. So if you go to uses for it, you can see that it's used to process diamonds into diamond vapor. Uh, and slime balls, well, kind of everyone knows what slime balls are used for. Uh, they do have a couple of uses in witchery. Uh, making concentrated bat balls and I thought they had another use as well must be mistaken but yeah they are something that is just good to have around um, and tends to be fairly handy so yeah, that's the, pro the way that this works so you can see it's got a cool little animation on the front too that when you actually place jars in you can see that it kind of hangs them on the rack there you go um, if you try to process something with less jars than it gives you as an output. So that last one, it took the foul fume 
and the quick lime and produce three items, only one went into a jar. Some of them will put four or five things into a jar. Uh, as an example, let's go here. You can see it takes three jars. That number at the bottom, it will not process unless it has the right number of jars. So you're never going to lose any of those things that you make, which is, I think, a, a really good thing that the model authors thought of when they've done that. Um, so basically where I've got us to now is I've got us to distilling fumes uh, and the ability to distill some fairly good fumes. Um, I've got us processing our gold. Um, now that we have gold, uh, the final thing that we're going to do this episode is we're going to make a thing called an Athana. Now this is a special ritual dagger. Um, this is the reason you need to be near an extreme hills biome because you want that emerald as well as these other things. Now, I can't really show you. Oh no. Okay, so basically what just happened there uh, is there is a slight chance every time you do something witchy uh, that you attract the attention of witch hunters. Um, particularly voodoo magic. Voodoo magic is a key one for attracting their attention. Um, clearly I voodooed myself enough to get their attention uh, and then they just randomly spawn an attack. Um, glad that happened in the episode. Um, couldn't make it happen again if I tried though. But basically what this does is this allows special rare mob drops that are specific to the witchery mod. Um, so if you're playing vanilla Minecraft it will allow uh, skeletons to drop heads because skeleton heads uh, and with the skeleton heads can actually be added to the altar here uh, to increase both the power and the recharge rate. Um, you can use it on bats and make them drop wool of bat. Uh, you can use it on uh, wolves to make them drop tongue of dog. Uh, you can use it on toads which are a thing we'll get to much much later and make them drop toad, toe of toad. Uh, owls, you can get owl wings. So there's all these different things that you can get that you can only get by using this particular dagger. Um, and putting the looting enchantment and things like that on it really helps to boost those drop rates as well. Um, so now that we've got to this point, um, you actually have the ability now to make that wool of bat, to make that fire protection pop it. Again, it's really up to you depending on what you're going to do. So for this episode, um, we covered the silver vats, we covered the distillery, we covered poppets, um, and we covered how to get the Athana. So in the next episode, we're going to start talking about I guess the next logical progression for me anyway, the way that I think it would play, uh, is circle magic. So thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. Until then, A-Stock out.